Good evening from Brussels, where the emergency Brexit summit is still taking place, with just two days to the set date for the UK's departure from the European Union. Theresa May addressed the gathering of EU leaders earlier this evening, requesting a delay in the Brexit process of up to June the 30th. But there are reports of divisions tonight between those EU leaders insisting on a longer delay and those who warn against giving the UK any opportunity to disrupt the EU's future business. After making her case, Mrs May left the meeting while the other EU leaders discussed the proposals over dinner. Our political editor, Laura Kunzberg, has the latest for us. One of the most important conversations of her career started with a laugh. Angela Merkel sharing an online gag over their almost identical wardrobe choices today. We don't know yet, though, what else the leaders had in common tonight. Here she is, ready to try to persuade the rest of the room of the case for delay. Are you embarrassed to be asking for another delay? Well, first of all, obviously I'm here with fellow leaders to talk about the request I've put in for a short extension to Article 50. And I know many people will be frustrated that the summit is taking place at all uh, because the UK should have left the EU by now and I greatly regret the fact that Parliament has not been able to pass a deal. But, Prime Minister, the decision on the length of the delay is not in your hands. You've said, as Prime Minister, you could not countenance a delay beyond June the 30th. So I ask you again, what will you do if the EU insists on a longer delay? I'm working to ensure that we can leave the European Union uh, within the timescale that the government wants to see. I want us to, have, uh, to be able to leave the European Union in a smooth and orderly way as soon as possible. And that's what I'm going to be working for. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. She doesn't want to answer that yet. Her counterparts will take some convincing of what she could do with a short pause. Uh, an extension in itself does not solve this problem. It gives uh, the British side more time, more space to, to find a solution. I don't think it's worth trying. At the same time, I also think it's frustrating. The French president, the most resistance, saying he still needs more clarity. La clarté. And repeated, nothing, yet nothing is decided. The consensus here in Brussels and across the European Union will be to give uh, the United Kingdom a little bit more time for the uh, cross-party talks that are happening to conclude, uh, and uh, we can review the situation then in a few months' time. Remember, the UK is still walking this red carpet because at home the government's failed to win the case for its Brexit deal in Parliament. Order. Questions to the Prime Minister. The proposal, even for a delay of three months, is hated by many on her own side. Rather than delivering a diluted deal which is unrecognisable to many of the voters who voted to leave, is to go under WTO rules. We should grab that opportunity and believe in the ability of the British people. What the rest of us Yet for those who'd rather stop it altogether, a likely longer wait is the chance to ask all of us again. In her final days as Prime Minister, Will she accept the EU offer of a long extension, accept that she has run out of road and accept that the only choice now is to put this back to the people? Her only answer to them all is to go on. Uh, and I'm continuing to work, continuing to work to ensure that we can deliver Brexit and can do that in a way that works for people across this country. Knowing the date of our eventual departure from the EU is tied to her own exit too. No, the Prime Minister has agreed to go. I was in discussions with her. She's given a, a period for that. She's hinged it to the past passage or ratification of a deal. Uh, but I think the reality now is that that is becoming the firm date for departure, you know, the end of May, June. Discord at home watched so closely here. A big reason why this process has stumbled again and again. Voices slamming the Prime Minister's leadership, or lack of it, never far away. The Prime Minister's back here, and we're all still in, arguing for more time to stay. Because the politics of getting out have proved impossible so far. Now Theresa May is trying to persuade the EU that she can make it happen by finding common ground with Labour. But as yet, there's simply no hard proof she will ever be able to make that work. Tonight's plea is about avoiding the turmoil of leaving without a deal at all. But on its own, more time does not remove the same dilemmas staring the country in its face. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Brussels.
So tonight here in Brussels, the talks still haven't concluded. Let's talk to our Europe editor, Katja Adler. Katja, the Prime Minister made a case quite a few hours ago now. Do we know how that went down? Well, here in stark contrast to the last Brexit summit, there was a real absence of EU leaks criticising her performance. But perhaps the question could be, how did the majority of EU leaders want the Prime Minister to go down today? Because was she walking into the lion's den with all the leaders with their arms folded? No, they wanted to have an excuse to grant her this further Brexit extension, not out of a personal favour, but because they want to avoid a no-deal Brexit on Friday. Also, EU leaders keep across the press in the UK and they know the ongoing political divisions in Parliament. So they didn't have great expectations that she would present them a clear cut what next with Brexit. Now, as soon as the Prime Minister left the room, EU leaders, because they wonder about Theresa May's future, began to think how to protect the EU if there would be another UK Prime Minister who might want to try and disrupt the workings of the European Union from the inside. It's a big concern of theirs. And since then, Hugh, they've been arguing about long versus short extension. 17 member states are in favour of a longer extension, but that's not unanimous. Remember, there's 27 leaders in all. They have to come to a unanimous conclusion tonight. One thing is for sure, no one in that room wants this process to go on any moment longer than it absolutely needs to, but they want to avoid a no-deal Brexit. One high-level contact put it to me. What they've got in front of them is they have to choose the best of a very bad range of options. OK, Katya, for now, thanks very much. We'll talk again before the end of the programme for another update. Thanks very much. Katya Adler there, our Europe editor. So, I think it's fair to say, and Katya said it many times, uh, there's unmistakable frustration here in Brussels uh, that the Brexit process is taking far longer than expected. Uh, the UK has already passed the initial March 29th deadline, as we know, uh, and uh, that frustration uh, certainly shared by many voters in the UK. Back in the referendum of 2016, few areas had a higher turnout than Derbyshire Dales, which is in the uh, East Midlands, where nearly five out of six people cast their vote. Uh, and the result then mirrored the national outcome. Now, our special correspondent, Ed Thomas, has been finding out how people feel about the process nearly three years on. The government have totally let us down, mate. Both sides. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It shouldn't even be... <laughs> they're, not, they're not fit to govern. End of story. Quite well, split us, hasn't it? It's divided us all. We're all arguing. Have I ever voted again? No, I'm never. Not. I'm, Seriously? Yeah. Seriously, I'm not. No. never voting again. So my fear is that the children of tomorrow are going to be left really short-handed and going to have to pick up a lot of slack that these MPs have now brought upon ourselves. The Derbyshire Dales, a place for people to relax and escape. Except when it comes to Brexit. I'd like to remind, but I'm, I'm, I voted out and we should be out. He wants another referendum. Excuse me. I Ex really? Excuse me, you've heard about this, haven't you? <laughs> no, 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 look, if we, if we vote out again, that's fine. That's wonderful. But I, I let's know. have another. But you'd know more now than you did three years ago. I did a lot of research before I voted. You're the only one. In Matlock. Stephen and Norman have only just met. No, I, I am Derbyshire, born and bred. But there's only one thing they're talking about. If we have another vote, then we can vote again to leave, and I'll, everyone will accept He's it. He's voted once, We've though. voted well, once. Oh, come on, is Mr. that you vote Cameron, once in your life? Mr. You vote Cameron once, and that's promised. the end of democracy, I've one vote. It, I got it on my telephone. Mr Cameron vote, promised that this is a one-time vote, and we will do, do what you, you want. Do you he also that promised that he would stay. Down the road to Matlock Bath, nicknamed Little Switzerland. But when it comes to the benefits of your Brexit, I'm all for being out. I think no deal, walk away. Opinions are split. What about the economy? It's short term. Short term's going to be difficult. I accept that. And I'm prepared for that. And I think anybody who's not sort of, who voted out and wasn't aware that that was going to be a couple of years of hard shit, then that was daft on their part. Are you worried about it? Your future? Yeah, I'm worried about the amount of jobs that will come from Brexit and the lack of jobs that could possibly come from it. I'm not too worried about that because at the end of the day... Have you I'm... got a job? Yes. yes. Your daughter hasn't? No, but I don't. I, I still think she'll be all right. I never voted before um, the referendum. Never in a general election? Never in a general election, never in my locals. And three years on from that vote, Liana's fears haven't gone away. I think it's unfair. I think people aren't 
been given the true reflection of what exactly is going to happen. And me personally, I think it should go back to a people's vote, back to the referendum. Time and again, we kept hearing the same word. People are frustrated because we haven't got an answer. It's, we're divided, aren't we? Whichever way we go, the choices of fracturing a nation. At Thomas BBC News in the Derbyshire Dales. A range of voices there uh, with Ed Thomas in the Derbyshire Dales. Back here in Brussels, our political editor Laura Koonsberg is with me. So, the Prime Minister right now, waiting for the verdict. Waiting like the rest of us. And it's so important for her tonight because although for a long time she wanted to keep the idea of leaving the EU without a deal on the table, she felt that would be the right way of putting pressure onto the negotiations, it's abundantly clear now for a number 10 that is something to be avoided at almost any cost. And if, in some small chance, these talks backfire tonight, if she didn't do enough in the room, if the EU leaders can't agree, as things stand, it's still possible, even a tiny sliver of that, that we might leave the European Union without a deal at the end of this week. That is still a possibility if this whole thing implodes, if Theresa May didn't get anyone on side, if her answers were just not sufficient to give credibility to the idea that she's got a plan to get the country out of the Brexit maze that awaits her back home. And even if she does, still the nature of what's agreed, the length of delay you were discussing with Katia, is hugely important over what happens next at home. Can she get a compromise together with the Labour Party? That seems not impossible, but unlikely at the moment. Can she stay on when even the very nature of delay is stirring up trouble yet again inside her own party, when she's already said, as soon as I get this bit done, I promise you I will be out of the way. So the fate of her and all of us really is being decided right now, not by Britain itself, but by EU leaders. And that is an ultimate irony, of course. After nearly three years ago, the country narrowly but clearly made the decision to leave with the hope of, in future, taking back more control of our destiny.